Good afternoon, everyone, especially the representatives of the state. We're very happy that you're here today. It is such a rich discourse and dialogue when the state is present at these hearings. Um, so I welcome all the honorable representatives and also the hardworking and persistent and, and, and determined workers in of civil society who are the requesters of this hearing and who are present here today. I would not list all your names so as to save time, but this is the 12th hearing of the 183rd regular session of our per uh, a period of sessions. And the subject matter of this hearing is the human rights situation of LGBTI persons in Honduras. It is the reason and object of the hearing is to for the civil society and the state to present information on violence motivated by prejudice against sexual orientations, gender identities, expressions, uh, gender identities and expressions, and diverse sexual characteristics, as well as the situation of impunity for such cases. In addition, the organizations will provide information on the situation of the rights to gender identity and equal marriage, among other human rights of LGBTI people in Honduras. But before we start, I just wish to remind you that you, the civil society will have 20 minutes to present their position. Then the state would, uh, would answer in for 20 minutes. And there and after, we will hear from the United Nations expert for seven minutes. And then members of the commission and special rapporteur and the assistant uh, executive secretary, if she so wishes, will be heard for 20 minutes. There and after, we come back to civil society who would speak for 12 minutes in response and the state will respond for 10 minutes. And at which point I will close this hearing. I also must remind you, and I hope you will keep an eye on it, that we have a clock on the screen, which will tell you the time. So we are asking you, please, to try to keep within your allotted time. Um, I now have the pleasure to invite civil society to commence their submissions. Thank you. Civil society. Buenas tardes a todos, todas. Good afternoon, everyone. We would like to greet the Honorable Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, IACHR, on behalf of the LGBTI community of Honduras. Today, we are present at this hearing on the Group of Access to Justice for the LGBTI Population and the Committee of Sexual Diversity of Honduras. My name is Osman Carcamo, and I'm a member of the Association LGBTI Arcoiris of Honduras. I would like to explain the situation of human rights of LGBTI persons in Honduras. In 2021, LGBTI organizations conducted or carried out a report on the inclusion of LGBTI persons in Honduras, which allowed us to measure the level of inclusion of LGBTIQ plus people in the areas of health, education, civil and political participation, economic empowerment, security and violence by using the tools from the United Nations Development Program and the World Bank. Some of the findings of the report are 49% of LGBTI persons stated that they had suffered some time of discrimination, which leads LGBTI population to drop out the education system. The law against the school harassment does not include a specific uh, aspects due to sexual orientation, gender identity, and sexual expression. The educational program does not include training in comprehensive sexual education issues. 
LGBTI persons are excluded in the education and labor spheres, and this is related to considerable levels of poverty. The report shows that 38% of LGBTI persons are in a situation of poverty and extreme poverty. In Honduras, the legal framework does not stipulate any regulation, law, decree, or public policy that favors employment of LGBTI people. The report shows also that 51% of LGBTI persons do not have a job, whether they are employees or independent workers. The report also shows that 38% 38, 38 of LGBTI persons have experienced violence or discrimination in the health system. It is important to highlight that 63% of LGBTI persons state that they do not have access to comprehensive health services. Regarding the public health system, there are no differentiated comprehensive care protocols for LGBTI persons, which facilitates the perpetuation of actions of discrimination and stigmatization in the supply of these services. Inequality gaps persist and they limit the full exercise of citizenship of LGBTIQ plus persons, especially in political and electoral participation. This includes the, no, the legal no recognition of the name change of trans people also political organizations with discriminatory practices with electoral institutions that do not answer to the demands of LGBTI persons, among others. Regarding the organization of LGBTI persons in civil associations or non-governmental organizations, there are no regulatory restrictions for their creation or registration. However, the report shows that authorities delay the processes and impose barriers so that these organizations are not legally recognized. Out of over 45,000 candidates for popular elections in 2021, in the general electoral process, only four gay people were able to participate. Two of them were favored or voted by popular vote as candidates. Now we would like to talk about hate crimes. Good afternoon, my name is Edra Sosa. I'm a member of the Asociación Arcoiris of Honduras. I'm also coordinator of the National Roundtable for Access to Justice for LGBTI Population. In Honduras, violent deaths of LGBTI persons that are reported according to the organizations on sexual diversity are related to homophobic behaviors. This is taken into consideration patterns in the murders that include torture, suffocation, mutilation, and incineration. According to data showed by our organizations from 2009 to date, a total of 425 cases have been registered. Only 89 have been prosecuted. This shows that in the cases of violent deaths of LGBTI persons, there is a judicial delay of 79%. In the countries, there is no classification of a causa de la homo, lesbo, bitranfobia en la normativa penal hondureña, así como mecanismos, protocolos de atención, manejo e investigación diferenciada para los casos de violencia hacia esta población. Acciones para el reconocimiento legal de la unión civil de personas del mismo sexo. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Roger Silva, formo parte del Centro para el Desarrollo y la Cooperación LGTBI Somos CDC. El Estado de Honduras, en fecha 21 de enero de 2021, en flagrante violación a los procedimientos establecidos en las leyes, blindó la prohibición de reconocimiento de este derecho a través del decreto 192-2020. This is uh, with interpreter, we will continue. We have this is about same. Reconocidos bajo las leyes de otros países no tendrán validez. This is under the law. Uh, Can you hear me now? Honduras. Right. This article can only be reformed by uh, two thirds of the members of the Congress. Any legal dispositions created after that uh, will be void. The LGBTI have developed several actions. Number one, on December 2018, we presented a 
an, a remedy for uh, the declaration of inconstitutionality for several articles by which uh, the Congress reformed the national constitution. And in the first case, it limited the right to uh, marriage and civil union. This was affected, uh, so this was accepted. Then in January 18th, 2022, the constitutional court notified that it rejected the unconstitutionality remedy because it considered that uh, it had, was already declared constitutional and that the drafting of the reform of Article 45 of the Family Code was done based on Article 112 of the Constitution. Now, the law on constitutional justice establishes that uh, this should be done in 20 days. And even though the organizations presented four remedies, this pronouncement was made uh, too many days after that procedure. The rejection to LGBTI persons uh, is done in the normative sphere and in practical terms. A couple of gay men requested at the local mayor office to celebrate uh, civil marriage, but their request was rejected by the municipal secretariat. Commissioner Mercado, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, you can go on. Thank you. They violated the right to petitioning enshrined in the constitution of our country. This was denounced at the National Commission for Human Rights on July 9th, 2021. The uh, requesting parties requested the authorities of the mayor's office information about why their request had been rejected. And they also filed again a, a request for marriage. On August 2, 2021, the mayor's office replied about the request, denying their petition, basing that decision on Article 112 of the Constitution. In July 2021, there was a request for uh, the civil marriage of a couple of gay men was uh, uh, requested, but they, the request was denied under the basis that the Constitution in its Articles 111 and 112 and 121 established that uh, the family and marriage are under the protection of the state, but that does not apply to uh, homosexual couples. On August 2021, uh, an amparo action was filed at the constitutional higher um, court for the uh, insurance of the right to equality and family and marriage. The uh, remedy was uh, admitted several days later, but in October 2021, that was rejected because it was considered that there was no legislation allowing marriage between persons of the same sex. So there was no violation of constitutional warranties. Now, then in December 2020, there was a request at the National Registry of Persons to um, record the marriage of a couple of gay men. It was admitted under uh, file 133 IMH E2020. But on July 12, 2021, the registry decided to reject the request based on Article 112 of the Constitution. That is why on July 2021, there was um, a remedy for uh, voiding was uh, presented that was rejected as well. That is why we are uh, requesting um, this, uh, this action to be declared void. 
Then on July 20. 9, 2022, there was a request for the inscription of a marriage of two lesbian women. It was uh, filed under file 29072021487. In September 2021, the Permanent Commission decided to reject it because the uh, Republic of Honduras in its constitution rejects such a union. That is why we are trying to appeal that, but the commission has not resolved what to do yet. Finally, in January 2022, two actions were filed at the um, with regards to the inconstitutionality of the measure with regards to Article 67 and 112 of the Constitution, and another one, a partial one, against the reform of the last paragraph of Article 112 of the Constitution. Now, actions for the legal recognition of gen the gender identity of trans persons. LGBTI organizations have carried out tons of actions for the recognition of ge the gender ide identity of trans persons, in particular, those related to their legal change of name. For example, in 2019, a request was filed at the Constitutional uh, Court against Act 62-2004 with regards to the law of the National Registry of Persons because it is believed that it was incompatible with the rights enshrined in the Constitution, rights to human dignity, justice, and freedom, which are also part in the agreements that Honduras has undersigned. The court accepted the resource, but so far, there has been no sort of resolution and the court has, says not, has said nothing about it. 18 requests for legal change of name have been presented, but out of those 18, only four were admitted and those four were rejected. So an appeal uh, was presented at the National Commission for Human Rights. Their reply was uh, a rejection because they said that this civil officer uh, did not have the authority to change names. Finally, in August 2021, a writ of amparo was filed at the Constitutional Court with regards to all these um, remedies that have been requested, but there has been no resolution so far. Now, public policy. Hi, my name is Tiara Barrientos. I am part of the Center for the Development and Cooperation of LGBTI Persons. So far, Honduras still continues not to recognize the gender identity of trans persons, violating their rights and uh, constitutional warranties. In November 2021, the organizations of the Committee of Sexual Diversity of Honduras and the National Table for Access to Justice for LGBTI persons presented a proposal to reform the law and the rules of the National Registry of Persons at the National Congress of Honduras with over 4,400 signatures from all corners of the country. It was presented at the National Registry of Persons, the Human Rights Secretariat, the National Commission of Human Rights, the Secretariat for Foreign Affairs, the National Electoral Council, the um, General Prosecutor's Office, and the Supreme Court of Justice so that these institutions would uh, work for this. The organizations of sexual diversity and other groups who are vulnerable as Afro-descendants, indigenous, women, children and adolescents, youngsters, persons with disabilities, migrants, older persons, among others, have created a technical center for consensus and drafting, validating and presenting proposals for laws and public policies to recognize, protect and ensure our human rights. They are the proposal to reform the criminal code 
in terms of discrimination, the proposal of a law for equality, a proposal for a public uh, policy for work without discrimination, a proposal for a municipal policy for no discrimination, a proposal for a law of the comprehensive protection of LGBTI persons, a protocol for the identification of hate crimes, a protocol for the attention of LGBTI persons at detention centers and protocols for the attention of LGBTI persons at criminal centers. Now, requests, Honorable Inter-American Convention, Convention of Human Rights. The LGBTI organizations request that the state Hondur of Honduras works with our organizations and other vulnerable groups to build and pass laws and policies that are essential for non-discrimination. Campaigns should be designed and implemented for information, education, and sensitization to bring down the stigma, discrimination, and all kinds of violence against LGBTI persons. They should be based in statistics, official statistics produced in synergy between the organizations and the National Institute for Statistics establishing state programs to contribute to the training of um, of LGBTI persons and their work opportunities. We also request the reform of the health code, incorporating protocols for the differentiated attention of LGBTI persons, including hormonal therapies and other health necessities of trans persons, reforms to the um, safe blood policy, and also programs for psychological and mental health care for LGBTI persons trying to um, reduce damage uh, with a human rights focus, strengthening the procedures established in the electoral law and political organizations to generate a greater participation of LGBTI persons in the political and democratic life of our country, reforming it to warranty more inclusive processes and uh, more citizens' participation of the electoral process, the creation of protocols with differentiated approaches towards the access to justice for LGBTI persons with the participation of our organizations in its networks and human rights platforms. We also ask for the reform of the criminal code with regards to uh, discrimination crimes and the creation of the category of hate crime based in sexual identity or gender orientation or expression. We also ask for the um, declaration of inconstitutionality of the reform of Article 112 of the Constitution. We also ask for the uh, declaration of inconstitutionality of the uh, law of national the national registry of persons we need a new law with swift procedures for the changes in legal names of trans persons thank you very much thank you thank you very much um thank you for keeping to time very strictly thank you I now um, call upon the state um, to make their submissions in response to the civil society. Thank you. Honorable members of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, Distinguished representatives of civil society and general public, good afternoon. We would like to greet all of you from the state of Honduras. And we are appearing before this hearing on the situation of human rights of LGBTI persons in Honduras. My name is Manuel Antonio Candera, Attorney General of the Republic. I am here today with a delegation that is includes the Attorney General Office, the Secretariat of Human Rights and Development and Social Inclusion, the Secretariat of Security and National Defense. Today's participation will be on the following aspects. First, I, we will be presenting the position of the government for 2022-2026 regarding the rights of LGBTI persons. Actions in order to guarantee the inclusion of LGBTI persons in society and their social protection. Three, access to justice for LGBTI persons. Four, the presentation of the progress made regarding the resolutions of the ruling regarding the case of Vicky Hernandez against Honduras. 
um, the state of Honduras is committed to the international obligations derived from the different conventions on human rights that have been ratified. It also has an open doors policy regarding international mechanisms for the protections of human rights. Honduras has received recommendations regarding the rights of LGBTI persons. And within the framework of the third universal periodical review, we have received recommendations to protect LGBTI persons, and the state has committed to implementing and several actions and to follow the CIMORE or to use the CIMORE for those, implement those recommendations. These recommendations are a guideline for the state in the design of public policies, plans, programs, and projects that can guarantee the protection of human rights of LGBTI persons in Honduras. As of, two, so as, as of January 2022, we have a new democracy in our country. Uh, Xiomara Castro has become the first woman president of the Republic. Honduras is facing several challenges in terms of the guarantee, promotion, and protection of human rights of its population, especially for LGBTI persons. As a result of this, the government plan for 2022-2026 includes components to guarantee the exercise of their rights, especially for LGBTI persons who, is a pop who are a population that have been in a situation of vulnerabil vulnerability. And we are working together with the different groups that advocate for the rights of LGBTI persons. Um, in order to explore the position of the government for 2022-2026, regarding the protection and promotion of the rights of LGBTI persons. I would like to give the floor now to the Secretariat of State for Human Rights. Um, Natalie, you have the floor. Thank you. Good afternoon, honorable commissioners, representatives of civil society organizations, uh, technical staff on the American Commission, press, and other persons who are following this hearing. Um, my name is Natalie Roque Sandoval. I'm the Secretary of Human Rights. First of all, I would like to express the commitment of our President, Xiomara Castro, to human rights and the rights of LGBTI persons. We are well aware that our agenda is an agenda that is focused on persons and their dignity. In spite of the fact that we were attacked during the political campaign or the electoral campaign because of stigmatization speeches, we will keep firm and keep our commitment to those who are most vulnerable. We will work hand by hand with others so that we have a Honduras that includes all of us. Our government is facing a difficult transition. We have weak institutions and we don't have a lot of financial resources. Um, therefore, there are challenges to implement a human rights agenda. However, our legal and ethical commitment is there and will be there in spite of the obstacles. In the previous weeks, we started to dismantle the uh, structure of persecution of democracy, human rights defenders including LGBTI groups and associations who have participated in the last social fights and who have been advocating for their rights in history. Um, the government of Xiomara Castro would like to repair those victims of the last decade. The case of Vicky Hernandez, who was murdered in the evening of the coup, is one of the cases that requires justice. So again, we would like to repeat our commitment to the victims of the human rights violations in previous years. Our government plan for 2022-2026 includes a set of proposals aimed at protecting the rights of LGBTI persons, and this has no pre precedent. For example, the plan includes or establishes that sexual discrimination is reflected across society, especially with the denying or the denial of the rights of this group. The plan also includes the passing of a law for protecting LGBTI persons. And this law will cover all the rights of this group and also an identity gender law to guarantee social inclusion and the building of safe houses and primary health care for these people. Also the creation of a unit 
to investigate violent and hate crimes against LGBTI persons, and also the creation of a program for psychological health of LGBTI persons. The current government also recognizes the need to punish the hate crimes against LGBTI persons and to create safe spaces in at all levels with a human rights perspective. These programs require structural solutions that recognize the interconnection of the rights of LGBTI persons that go to the root of the problem. Taking into consideration the commitment of the current government to dignity, we will take into consideration the international recommendations in the area of human rights. And this includes the 31 recommendations regarding the rights of LGBTI persons, the universal periodic review, and recommendation 17 of the report after the local visit of 2018. It's also timely to mention the progress made and the new proposals that we have to protect LGBTI persons defenders. Up to 2022, we have covered several measures of protections, and that represents or accounts for 75 measure, percent of the measures have been taken care of. This includes several precautionary measures, individual and collective, the case of a trans woman, human rights defender, and also the case of several human rights defenders and two cases of human rights organizations. We know that we need to do much more and to create the right environment so that human rights defenders can exercise their work. As a result, in the agenda of the Secretariat of Human Rights, our priority is to strengthen and to consolidate the protection mechanism for the full compliance of the objectives of the law for the protection of human rights defenders, social communicators, journalists, and justice operators. Thank you. And now I would like to give the floor to my colleague so she can explain the policies aimed at LGBTI persons. And she is lawyer Nama Avila from the Secretariat of State for Social Development and Social Inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Natalie. Good afternoon, honorable commissioners. As you know, the LGBTI persons in Honduras is facing many legal challenges and social challenges. Therefore, here I am here to inform the different measures that are being taken to recognize the human rights of LGBTI persons. And this is from the Office of Social Protection. We are promoting these actions. First, the institutional recognition of the gender identity of trans persons by accepting that their ID card should have the name according to the development of their personality. Second, the establishment of a gender strategy that includes several actions within the Secretariat. And this includes several programs that are promoted by our Secretariat. Three, the creation of protocol for uh, protect LGBTI persons against sexual harassment and against discrimination in the labor environment or labor market. Four, we are thinking about creating a pension system for LGBTI persons in order to promote actions of inclusion, equality, and respect of the rights of LGBTI persons in the country. Five, through the direction or the Office of Persons with Disabilities, we are trying to identify the needs of LGBTI persons with disabilities together with organizations of the community in order to promote labor inclusion and to create policies to promote the mobility of persons with disabilities. Also, we are thinking about implementing a strategic plan based on human sustainability in order to guarantee a minimum salary and a safe housing and food security and different opportunities for LGBTI persons in order to improve their living conditions. With regard to the case Vicky Hernandez et al. against Honduras, we will have 10 scholarships for trans persons. And under the current administration, we are favoring the hiring of LGBTI persons. We would like to have 10% quota for new employees. This is all under a strategy to have dialogue tables in order to amend the current legislation. The Secretary of State for Health um, is 
conducting several actions to promote the care of LGBTI persons, especially for those who require special treatments. For example, through executive decree of November 2021, a new regulation for the special law on HIV AIDS was approved. And this includes a human rights and gender perspective. Second, they are preparing a guide regarding health services provision for LGBTI persons and trans persons, sexual workers. And this guide should be applied in the different health centers of the country. Three, currently we have 11 health centers that provide health attention for LGBTI persons through a Sentinela surveillance uh, service. Also, we have included a specific office that is the acquire name, and therefore we are collecting information regarding HIV um, or persons with HIV and AIDS. Also, we are making or conducting different campaigns to create awareness and to promote inclusion of LGBTI persons in the labor market. We are taking into consideration several principles for this. In 2021, together with Colectivo Violeta and Asociación Cultural, we started to have a plan for five months in order to promote actions to prevent or to promote the use of services to prevent HIV and AIDS in the labor market. We also conduct several actions to create awareness among workers and health workers regarding some sensitive information according to Convention 111 regarding education and employment in order to, uh, I'm talking about Convention 111 of the ILO. Also, the National Electoral Council has been working since 2016 together with the Sexual Diversity Committee in order to create jobs and proposals and actions in order to improve the participation of LGBTI persons in electoral process and in consultation processes. And these are the projects that have been implemented so far. One training in political rights and actions to guarantee the compliance of the current electoral law, to guarantee full participation of all citizens with a special focus uh, on those who are in a situation of vulnerability. Two, awareness regarding the political rights of LGBTI persons. This is for public officials, especially for the National Electoral Committee, political parties, the army and the police. Three, the promotion of rights through campaigns and the participation of LGBTI organizations in different processes. Four, the creation of a framework agreement to promote the participation in elections of LGBTI persons and also the participation in several LGBTI organizations in Honduras. Five, different administrative procedures to promote the participation of LGBTI persons. Now I would like to give the floor to Attorney General of the Republic, Nelson Gerardo Malin. Thank you. Honorable Commissioners, it's important to indicate that in January 2021, the National Congress through a national decree amend the articles 97 and 112 of the Constitution of the Republic regarding same-sex marriage and abortion. The amendment was presented before the legislative power that includes several political parties. And this is the house of the popular sovereignty. They have the power to conduct legislation reforms. However, it's important to take into consideration the different actions of the Constitutional Court of the Supreme Court of Justice. The Office of the Attorney General indicates that the Secretariat of Human Rights applies the different actions contemplated and also the different prosecutor offices work in this. We, um, we are applying the law in order to address the crimes against LGBTI persons. As a result, between 2017 and 2022, uh, we have 48 
and between 2017 and 2021, we have 12 convictions against four crimes against LGBTI persons. The Office of the Attorney General through the CONADEF have provided training regarding the investigation of crimes against LGBTI persons. And now investiga investigators are able to consider gender identity in their investigations and they are trying to investigate if the crimes are committed because of hate reasons. Also, the Office of Investigations has trained a force of staff in order to investigate um, these rights, especially for LGBTI persons. Then we have the Criminal Investigation Office that has an specialized section in this matter. Taking into consideration what I have said before, shows that the Office of the Attorney General is committed to investigating the crimes against LGBTI persons in an adequate way and with a differentiated approach. The uh, Secretary of Security has conducted several trainings for law enforcement officers, especially taking into consideration the situation of vulnerability of some groups, including LGBTI persons. Over 1,300 officers from the police have been trained in this regard last year. The Secretariat of National Defense reports that the army officers are being trained constantly, especially in the respect of human dignity, the principle of non-discrimination with a focus on international standards. And this is something that we are trying to um, promote among all the levels of the armed forces taken into consideration the ruling of the Inter-American Court regarding the case of Vicky Hernandez against, against Honduras, we would like to inform the following. With regard to the adoption of a procedure to recognize gender identity so people can update their data in their public registries, the Office of the Attorney General, the Secretariat of Human Rights and the National Registry of Persons are coordinating actions in order to apply this procedure taking into consideration the recommendation of the Inter-American Commission. Also, the National Registry um, requested technical assistance to adapt the national legislation and regulations. Also, the state of Honduras is receiving the technical assistance for that. The National Congress of the Republic received a proposal to reform the National Registry to recognize the change of name of trans persons. That proposal has been promoted by several organizations of the LGBTI community. Also, we are preparing a bill between, with the support of the Spanish Agency for Development and the Office of Attorney General to guarantee um, lawyers and technical assistance for the victims in order to design and implement a system of information collection, especially for cases of violence against LGBTI persons. Also, uh, we are granting a scholarship for the family members of Vicky Hernandez, and the government will be also giving other scholarships to other persons. Also, we are adopting better standards for the investigation of cases of violence against LGBTI persons, and a working group has been created, and this includes um, also some organizations that will be acting as representatives for the victims. Also, we have the support of some NGOs. And this working table will be conducting a selection process for some consultants, national and international, for the drafting of the protocol. And also this includes the presentation of different results that will be validated by these experts. Also, we are also conducting several public acts to recognize uh, our responsibilities. Also, we have also establishing the plans of compensation and for the victims, according to the deadlines that have been stipulated, especially to comply with the ruling and with the non-repetition guarantees, the LGBTI organizations will have a space of participation so in public areas. So, Senor, Senor Flores, we have to ask you to stop at this moment in one minute and, and 10 seconds over time. You will have your 10 minutes later. 
to add to your statement. Thank you. Um, it is now my pleasure um, to welcome and to invite the United Nations rep, um, representative in Honduras, um, Madame Isabella Al Alba de Dejo. <laughs> I'm sorry about my um, pronunciation. Okay. A warm welcome to you. And you are invited to speak with, to us for seven minutes. Thank you so and much. You will see the clock on the screen, seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Buenas tardes. Tengo el honor de dirigirme a ustedes, agradeciendo. Good afternoon. A la... It's my honor to address you all, and I would like to thank the Commission for this opportunity for the um, Office of the High Commissioner to speak here and participate in this space. I would also like to thank the trust of the petitioners. I would also like to greet the representatives of the state of Honduras. My contribution to this public hearing of the period of sessions of the uh, Commission of Human Rights on LGBTI persons in Honduras is as a representative of our office. The idea is to provide informal information to the Commission without being under oath. So none of Nothing of what I say here must be considered a waiver to the um, privileges granted to the UN. I would like to stress on the main challenges LGBTI persons face in Honduras in terms of their rights. Our office observes that LGBTI persons in Honduras are victims of generalized stigmatization, which perpetuates um, violence against gender expression or identification. And this is usually expressed in psychological and physical violence, and even in the murder of some LGBTI persons. During 2021, Honduras registered 300 violent deaths per month. And this violence affects vulnerable populations disproportionately. In this case, um, the um, Catrachas Network reported 403 LGBTI deaths only in 2021. There were 28 deaths. And so far, only five of them have been tried. So this shows a lack of capability of the state to judge and investigate these crimes. In, 20, in 2022, we recorded, our office recorded the 10 deaths of gay persons, and only two cases were tried. There are also um, limited warranties uh, in terms of equality and non-discrimination because uh, the, LGBT, the rights of LGBTI persons are not respected because of uh, many laws that have not been implemented that have to do with uh, gender identity and um, uh, LGBTI rights. With regards to the constitutional uh, sphere, there are no warranties, even though the new criminal code uh, expands the definition of, um, uh, of, of violence uh, or, or discrimination based on gender identity or orientation, the constitution does not recognize the possibility of homosexual couples to marry and homosexual couples are not allowed to uh, adopt children also. In 2021, there was a reform of articles, of several articles of the constitution, and that strengthened the ban on gay marriage and gay civil uh, unions. And it says that uh, the, uh, the constitution can only be reformed with three quarters of the vote of the Senate. Now, uh, Organizations of the civil society have prepared several legal actions against all this, but most of the proceedings have not been solved by the courts. This is an opportunity for Honduras and its judiciary to control uh, conventionality in the country. Before this reform, our office also observed with concern that the constitutional court rejected two um, Com, uh, two requests for inconstitutionality uh, with regards to the prohibition of gay marriage. And the National Registry of Persons 
complies trans persons to have a legal name that does not match the name they identify with. The National Registry at least decided to take down the uh, gender or sex information from the national ID document. There are several barriers for LGBTI persons in terms of access to justice, since the courts discriminate many a time because of lack of knowledge or willingness. And that is why there is no trust in the justice systems. And apart from the lack of advance in the investigation of violent deaths, there uh, needs to be uh, more information and uh, more training for uh, judiciary operators and officials, state officials, in terms of due diligence, so as to strengthen the mechanisms to prevent and investigate violent deaths of LGBTI persons, sanction those the perpetrators, and uh, provide uh, reparations to their family members. As we also said in 2021, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights can, um, decided to uh, issue a decision against Honduras for the death of Vicky Hernandez and issued several, there were several recommendations uh, such as uh, institutionalizing a gender perspective for the judiciary and a new system of gathering of data in terms uh, that identifies LGBTI persons in census. Also a procedure to recognize gender identity that allows persons to adjust their data on their documents based on the gender identity that they perceive. The um, Office of the High Commissioner um, has offered to provide technical assistance and uh, we are concerned about the uh, lack of respect for certain um, conventions uh, and standards of human rights that are not enjoyed by LGBTI persons. That is why we celebrate the measures announced by the state to bring justice to LGBTI persons. Our office in Honduras thanks the work with the um, civil society organizations and the commission to advance in the protection of the rights of LGBTI persons. So, a procedure should be adopted to recognize gender identity that allows persons to adjust their data on their national documents, to adopt an investigation protocol in criminal processes for LGBTI persons who suffer violence, to create a permanent training plan for justice operators to apply in the National Congress and the judiciary a conventionality control and advance in the treatment of the law for equality and an adjustment of the constitutional framework to recognize gay marriage. And also to modify Agreement 629, the technical norm for handling uh, blood that excludes LGBTI persons as blood donors, since it considers them a group of risk, which contradicts international standards on non-discrimination. On behalf of our office in Honduras, I express my solidarity to the victims and their family members. You have our commitment and our support, uh, and as well as institutions have it as well, always in support of LGBTI persons. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, you, you spoke uh, um, in excess of your time, the same time as the same period as the state of Honduras. Anyway, I will have to pass that time on to civil society when they come to speak later. Um, it is now my pleasure to call on the, my fellow commissioners and uh, officers of the commission and special rapporteurs to do the intervention. I will retain my, my right to speak until the end because I want to ensure that you have your time to speak. So I now call on the country. We could each of us um, 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 introduce ourselves when we speak, please. I now call on the country rapporteur for Honduras to commence our submissions or statements or questions. Thank you. 
Muchas gracias, eh, Presidenta, por esta oportunidad para hablar. Thank you so much, Madam President. I would like to thank uh, the representatives of the state and the civil society and Isabel from the UN and the members of the Inter-American Commission for attending this hearing. I just have one question for the state authorities. The numbers on homicides of LGBTI persons presented by the UN representative are alarming. I would like to know specifically what information the state has about the um, criminal typifications or categories or those, those cases and what specific measures of protection have you implemented this year and will you implement immediately to protect the persons or whose lives are uh, under threat because they are LGBTI? That is my question for the state. Thank you. Um, Ms. McCauley, I think. Uh, thank you very much, um, com uh, Commissioner Bernal. I now invite my sister commissioner, Esmeralda de Chocino, to make her intervention. I would like to know if Commissioner Roberta Clark, who is the LGBTI reporter, Madam President, would like to speak. I think she should be the one. There's no problem for me. Roberta is at the hearing too, right? Thank you very much, Commissioner uh, Asur Mina. And good afternoon, everyone, uh, on this uh, on this hearing. I want to start off by uh, appreciating the presence of the range of civil society actors. I see you all are uh, all together in the room, so well organized, and also very much appreciating the presence of the attorney general and the team um, from the members from the member state. I want to start off by recognizing that the civil society organizations, the LGBT organizations that spoke with us here today have presented to us a rather bleak picture, which has been confirmed by the presentation of the state. We've heard of the, the, the pattern of discrimination, exclusion, marginalization that has undermined access to civil and political rights, but also to social and economic rights. Many LGBTI persons are living below the poverty line. We've got some data on that, and thank you very much. Um, many of them are, are experiencing violence, uh, and we've also got some alarming data on murder on murder rates, uh, which uh, Commissioner Bernhard has already alluded to. The lack of access to the right to, to identity, to, 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 gen, to gender expression, the, the right to equal marriage, equal rights within family, We've gotten a, a, you know, a very good sense of the inequities that, that exist um, and are experienced by LGBTI persons. But what we also got from the organizations that presented here was the range of strategies that they've been using to, to, to address the situation, strategies of advocacy for law reform, strategies of pol for policy, advocacy for policy reform, They've spoken about using litigation as a strategy, and of course, the studies and the data that they present, which are so important for us to monitor and to have a good sense of what is happening to LGBTIQ plus um, communities. So we have a good sense of the of the, the challenges that are ahead uh, and the work that has to be done. And so in that sense, it was so very encouraging to listen to the state present what seems to be a comprehensive plan to address inequality across the whole range of state endeavors, whether it's in education and in healthcare, access to HIV treatment, um, in the labor market, in political participation, in social protection, in the in the, the laws on 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 um, general non-discrimination and equality that of course include right to, to legal identity. Uh, we've, we've heard a, a whole range of of, of planning uh, by the by the by the state, and I don't want to go over any of that again. We've also heard uh, how they're complying with the court's ruling in the Vicky Hernandez case. They've also alluded to the how they're going to address the UPR 
31 recommendations from the Universal Periodic Review, and also they referred to the, the Commission's report of 2018, the Country Report, and in, and in, and in particular the recommendations addressing LGBTI um, uh, communities. So we, it's a wholly encouraging um, state presentation that we've received. And so I want to say it seems to me what is happening is that there is there will be a comprehensive strategy to address exclusion, discrimination, and marginalization of LGBTI persons. And it will be very important as the strategy is being developed and being implemented that the LGBTIQ community is fully engaged in, in co-creating the strategies, in co-creating the laws, but also in monitoring how those laws and strategies, strategies are being implemented and being part, a, a, a very regular and critical part of, a, of oversight mechanisms. Um, and so that's something I would like to ask uh, the, the representative of the state, what are their, what is their thinking about the inclusion of the LGBTI community in, in participating in the construction of the, of the, of the whole strategy for, um, for equality and in monitoring um, that. I also want to say, of course, the commission is here to help and support and provide technical assistance. In fact, we're, we're not just here to help, we're more than eager to do that. Um, including and in implementing the commission's recommendations. So thank you very much. This was an entirely uplifting session for me. Um, thank you, thank you very much, Commissioner Clark. Uh, do forgive me, I, your darkened screen misled me for a moment. I now call upon my sister, Commissioner Esmeralda. Thank you so much, Commissioner and President of this hearing. I would like to respectfully greet the civil society organizations because you gave us the opportunity to listen to all that information. Uh, and it was wonderfully structured, as my colleague said. And I would also like to thank the state of Honduras and convey my appreciation for that uh, statement that confirms the purposes of the hearings of the Inter-American Commission. These are spaces where petitioners and the state can find um, meeting points or shared points so that they can work together and Commissioner Clark was telling the state something that I agree with. Um, she, the state in this entire comprehensive plan is the state, as they said, is it uh, working with the civil society organizations and in particular with LGBTI groups? I would like to know if um, this answer, uh, sorry, it would be great if the uh, civil society and the state could let us know about the mechanisms of coordination. Are they effective uh, from the perspective of the state, I mean, but also from the perspective of the civil society? I would like to um, focus on something I didn't hear about, and I would like to know if you are addressing this, the problems faced by children and adolescents in education, in um, everything that represents for this community, LGBTI persons, what childhood means for them. Do you have uh, that data, recorded data? Because we would like to have access to that. And also, I would like to know if you have some sort of agenda addressed in these um, campaigning processes, if you have identified the um, population of children and adolescents 
because I am the rapporteur for, for, for them. So this is a, an issue that needs to be in the agenda of the protection of the rights of this particular group. And I would like to thank both parties for all the information they have presented. I think that these are major steps in the search for the necessary reforms so that the justice system that I think is um, basic for the protection of the life and the integrity of this group. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, thank you very much, my sister Esmeralda. I now have the pleasure of inviting the uh, Assistant uh, Executive Secretary to make her intervention. Muchas gracias, señora presidenta de esta audiencia. Thank you so much, Madam President of this hearing. I would like to greet everyone here. First of all, um, as Secretary for Technical Cooperation and Monitoring, I would like to appreciate the commitments made by the state. And I would like to say that you count on us for whatever technical cooperation you need in terms of training, of the development of uh, capabilities for public officials of the Honduras state, but also to assist you in your efforts to systematize data and to create databases on violence and also to disaggregate or um, break down the data based on the Inter-American standards. And I would also like to ask you to consider the recommendations presented on the report about trans persons and um, ECER rights, um, which I suppose our rapporteur will discuss as well. But the commission has also asked me to provide technical assistance on this. So that would be all for me. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, thank you, Maria Claudia. I now have the pleasure to call, call on a special rapporteur for economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights, Solidad García Mono. Thank you, Chair of the hearing. Good afternoon, commissioners, colleagues, honorable representatives of the state of Honduras, and dear members of civil society organizations. I would like to echo the last comment made by my colleague, Maria Claudia. That's a very important report. We work together with the rapporteurship for LGBTI persons and my rapporteurship. And I think that the report has key elements for you uh, regarding the protection of the rights of LGBTI persons. It's a report that accounts for the challenges faced by LGBTI persons in the region, as the civil society was explaining. The average life expectancy of trans persons is 35 years old. So that also shows uh, how relevant uh, the information provided by civil society is, because um, LGBTI persons um, violence against them, uh, and that affects all their economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights. And I would like to make three comments. First, uh, it caught my eye that civil society organizations requested psychological help and support for LGBTI persons. Uh, we would like for you to provide us more with more information on that request. Well, second, I would like to greet and to praise the efforts made by the state uh, to provide protection for LGBTI persons uh, regarding health, access to housing. We would like to have that information in detail as well. And third, I would like to express my concern regarding something said by the UN expert, because LGBTI persons in Honduras are not allowed to um, donate blood. So we believe that that is an old restriction and we believe that it should be changed. 
uh, we hope that this barrier is eliminated as soon as possible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I now have the pleasure of inviting Special Rapporteur Pedro Vaca um, of Freedom of Expression. Thank you. Pedro, watch the clock. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Presidenta. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to greet especially the commissioners, my colleagues from the Executive Secretariat, the Special Rapporteur, the representatives of civil society who requested the hearing, and also the representatives of the state. This is a key issue. Uh, among the different discussions of human rights in the region. I would like to make two comments. First, as it has been mentioned over the hearing, the case of Vicky Hernandez is very important in terms of the protection of the rights of LGBTI persons in the region. And I think that there is a specific duty to guarantee rights in the case of Honduras. And the court said, that the right to identity is protected by Article 13 of the American Convention, that is freedom of expression. And therefore, uh, that uh, not being able to show the different attributes or features of identity could be a violation of said right. So I would like to second uh, Maria Claudia Pulido and to show that you that we are at your disposal to provide you with any technical assistance so you can include this freedom of expression components in your programs and policies and initiatives aimed at improving the implementation and the guarantees and to implement the recommendations of said ruling and secondly I would like to say that within the framework of monitoring, we would like to say that during the electoral campaign of 2021, we identified some stigmatizing speeches against LGBTI persons. These persons were considered enemies. So we would like to request civil society organizations to send information. And I also would like to ask the state which measures they are considering so that these stigmatizing speeches are not repeated. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. In the short time I have left, I, I'll just make a quick statement and then I'll finish in my closing. Um, I'm Margaret Member Coley, second vice president and the rapporteur for Afro descendants and the rapporteur for the rights of the elderly. And I, I just will say at this point that I'm happy to hear that you have a head of a woman who is head of state. And I was hopeful when I heard your, your plans and what you, you say you're concern, uh, concerning yourself with in advancing the rights to equality and the life of dignity of the LGTI community in Honduras. We have been very concerned over the years about this. And all the years I have been in the commission and the level of violence um, um, in Honduras. So I was very happy and hopeful when I heard what you said, you, you, you as a government intend to do with this very serious and concerning challenge and issue. I will not go further now, I will leave my other statements for the closing. And it is now the time for the comments in response uh, to be made by civil society and for 10 minutes. And after civil society, I will invite the state to make your closing responses for 10 minutes. So civil society, please, thank you. Thank you for your interventions, commissioners. I also would like to thank the representatives of the state. According to the 38 measures of protection that exist, and 
the representatives of the states said that 70 percent of them have been covered the national mechanism of protection is not enough it has not guaranteed collective measures of protection for lgbti persons and there is no differentiated protocol to conduct risk analysis and assessments and they uh, grant measures there are harsh measures usually they just assign police officers to these people and those measures are not enough for example one of the persons responsible for granting those measures is being looked for or searched by the police thank you commissioners and thank you to the representatives of the state we believe that the government is well aware of our agenda that is what we presented today and today with me are 26 lgbti organizations and we are here to follow up on said agenda the minister of human rights is well aware of our agenda we the representatives of this a round table of access to justice, we would like to propose the creation of LGBTI intersectorial round table. In December, 2020, we presented before the Secretariat a bill that is the law on equality. And this bill has not been taken into consideration and has not been sent to Congress. That's what I would like to say. Good afternoon again, commissioners and the representatives of the state. As the commissioner May Macaulay was saying, one of the main concerns as LGBTI organizations in Honduras is the lack of access to the different institutions. This includes the Office of the Attorney General or the Secretariat of Human Rights or the Secretary of Social Inclusion. We have no direct participation in the processes to draft the action plan for the LGBTI community. In addition, we are not involved in the working group conducted with the Office of the Attorney General regarding the compliance of the ruling of Vicky Hernandez. We are not aware of the training and hiring processes of the different institutions that are working um, programs for LGBTI persons. In spite of this, we believe that the doors are closed in spite of the fact that we have technical and resources to help and to support these processes. Thank you. And we heard the state and we heard about their government plan and the strategies that they will be executing. However, I would like to call up on the state so that strategies and that plan are actually executed. In November 2021, there is a reform to the National Registry of Persons. And we presented this petition before the National Congress, but we have had no answer so far. This law should be amended. That is a priority because LGBTI persons are not visible because we are not recognized in our ID cards. And this leads to stigmatization and discrimination. And there is a limitation to fundamental rights such as the right to health, to education, etc. Now, um, we would like also to call up on the state and the National Registry of Persons to include us in those roundtables regarding the ruling of Vicky Hernandez. In terms of the health sphere, we believe that it's important that the health code is amended so that the LGBTI population is included because we are only included in the community of persons with HIV and AIDS. And this, that leads to discrimination regarding hormone replacement therapies. Honduras has no access to these treatments and that has an influence on the statistics because 
uh, LGBTI persons are not allowed to be treated with hormones right now. Are you finished? Civil society, are you finished? You know more statements? Or is there a breaking connection? Mm -hmm. Hello, Manuel, can you assist? No, muchas gracias. Okay. No. I they're finished. And then they have finished. They are finished? Okay. Um, yes. If they are. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, very, thank you very much for your timely, specific statements. I now invite the state to make its final statements in response. Ten minutes. With regard to the question posed by Carlos Bernal regarding the statistics and the report of criminal cases and everything that has to do with the mechanisms of coordination of with civil society, I would like to give the floor to Minister Natalie Roque. You have some three minutes. Thank you, Attorney General, Commissioners, and other members of the hearing. In this regard, we would like to second the voices of complaint that exists regarding the serious situation of the protection mechanism and the lack of investigation. And we know that this has happened over the decade in our country. I'm talking about hate crimes against LGBTI persons, but I'm also talking about other forms of violent death, including femini feminicides and crimes because of political reasons. As you know, we have just taken office only 45 days ago. So we are trying to recover the institutions and we would like to restore democratic warranties. So we are taking the necessary steps to create new round tables and to reactivate uh, round tables. And we have made a call from my secretariat and human rights the day I took office so that we have the support of civil society organizations so they are involved in the drafting of the public policies. And for that, we are currently working to redirect the institutional strategic plan in order to create a true national system of human rights that has an advisory council made up of civil society organizations. And for that, we need the involvement of the organizations that represent LGBTI persons in our country. So you have our commitment. We are starting to administrate the state only a few days ago, and we are taking actions in spite of the serious situations that we have in terms of institutions in our country because we are living a, de a decade of um, dictatorship. So we are trying to also end the campaigns of hate in order to not recognize the rights of vulnerable communities. I want to show the commitment of my administration to respect the human rights of everyone. Thank you. Commissioner Clark asked the state about how the LGBTI community will be included in the plans presented in this hearing. I would like to give the floor to lawyer Amanda Avila. Thank you, Attorney General, and thank you to the parties. I would like to say that the most important part of the mechanisms of implementation of the strategies mentioned by the different institutions of the state um, 
represented by my colleagues today. What we want to do is to work with the different organizations that represent the LGBTI community. Most of them are at the hearing. We have had several meetings with them in order to let them know about the actions and the plans in the mid and long term that we want to conduct. But we also want to listen to the demands so that we can amplify our strategies and so we can find some mechanisms to include their demands, especially um, we don't want to eliminate the plans that were okay from the previous administration. We want to include those plans. And what we are trying to do is to identify those actions or those plans from the previous administration. We are working together with other offices or we want to work with the different prosecutor offices and the National Registry of Persons. But I also think that it's important that there are other non-organized actors of the LGBTI community, and we want to get closer to them because this new administration wants to address the demands of the community from intersectionality. We understand the lack of equality uh, faced by LGBTI community, but we know that within vulnerable communities, there are even communities that are most vulnerable, for example, Afro-descendants and other communities. So in my office, we have different units that address these specific matters. And we want to consider these inequalities within the LGBTI community because they are the most vulnerable and we need to consider them within our state policies. That is what we wanted to share with you, but we have this strategy of inclusion and that is one of the essential components of this strategy of the government of Honduras. Finally, I would like to close the participation of the state of Honduras by saying that all the actions that we have presented at the hearing reflect the commitment of the state of Honduras with a focus on prevention. And we would like to reiterate our commitment to continue improving and working towards or to promote the dignity of people. And we would like to highlight the work of LGBTI uh, human rights defenders in order to promote inclusion in society. Honorable commissioners, taking into consideration the commitment of the government of the Republic to protecting human rights and taking into consideration the duty of the states to um, not create situations of discrimination, we would like to reiterate our commitment to guaranteeing dignified conditions of living for our population, especially for those groups that are in a situation of vulnerability, including LGBTI persons. In the next appearances before the Inter-American System of Human Rights, you will see the commitment of the state to developing the rights of said population. Thank you. Thank you very, very much um, for managing your time so well. I just have to, it is now my duty to close this hearing, which as um, more than one person has said, um, is a very sad and challenging and upsetting situation. And the state has, uh, has given them some hope. And I and myself, when I heard the state's um, plans, announced and so on, felt a great deal of hope for the future. And we will monitor very closely because of the experiences which we've had over the past years to see how you, the new government, are doing in, in uh, uh, realizing the plans which you have made. And you must not please forget that the commission is available at all times to you for any technical assistance that you may need. And you mustn't wait for another meeting to meet with us. But in fact, we would hope that you would invite the commission as soon as we can travel to Honduras when your plans are been going apace for us to 
be there, talk with people, talk with your officers, talk with your ministers to see how you are succeeding in these plans. And we hope that you will not forget that it is part of the expectation of the inter-American system of human rights that both the state agencies and ministries and officials work together with civil society, working for the rights of peoples <clears throat> and by dialoguing and together formulating legislation which is being drawn up and policies for the advancement of the principles of equality and equity and for dignified lives for all its citizens. And I want to ask in particular, and I'm sorry that my request is at the end and not before when you could comment on it, that you please, both sides, civil society and the state, submit to the commission information about all the persons within the LGBTI community, their status, the treatment they're receiving, especially in matters relating to their health and economic survival circumstances. And of course, it also, this also applies to the Afro-descendant communities within the group. And may I just highlight before closing what my sister Esmeralda spoke about. These, the children and adolescents, both girls and boys, male and female, are the future of Honduras. And if you could inform us in detail how they, when they are, and find themselves within the LGBTI group of persons, how they are treated, how they are protected, how they are assisted to grow into solid, uh, um, uh, valuable human beings, healthy in mind and body. And I just want to thank you again for the hopeful, presentation you made as a state. It's a long time in the, all the years Esmeralda and I have been in the commission that I've heard a presentation from a state government, which leaves one with such hope for the future. So we'll look forward to working with you and watching you work. And we hope that civil society in also monitoring your work will come to agree that you are good intentioned and intend to succeed. Please work together and try to meet with civil society regularly. We always encourage this. So thank you very much, all of you, for your superb presentations today. And we hope that circumstances will improve in Honduras as it ought in your wonderful state. Thank you. Goodbye, all of you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias.